So continuing on with the OpenStack on top of OpenShift theme, today we're going to be looking at um, the heat operator and I'm running into an issue creating heat stacks. So I'll show you that and then we'll walk through um, what I think is going to fix it and we'll, we'll look at some of the code and we'll, we'll try and implement a fix. So we'll switch over to the terminal, get straight into it. So I have heat running now. So if we do OpenStack endpoint list uh, service heat. So we can see that we have all of the endpoints available for, for heat now. And I'm just going to start the operator running locally. So if we want to make any changes that um, it'll be able to respond to them because I don't have it integrated with the OpenStack operator just yet. So I'm just running it locally here. We'll wait for it to kick off. Okay, there we go. So if we look at here, we've got the, the heat pods running. And if I just try and create a um, a heat stack so I've just got a template here so I just asked chat GPT to create me a heat template that creates a network a router and a subnet and there it is so we'll do open stack stack create dash T and we'll call it testnet Okay, so we can see we get an internal error there. So if we do OC exec into our engine pod, and we'll just cat var log heat, heat engine. So we can see here we get um, an error response, and that's coming back from Keystone. You can see that it's a bad request there from Keystone. So if we take a look at our config file, so we we'll should remove any comments or any empty lines from it. You can see at the top here, we've got the heat stack domain admin and then the heat stack domain password, which we don't have implemented. Whereas if we compare it to a OSP 17 environment, we scroll up here. So we can see there we've got a, a proper username and password. So this heat stack domain admin user. So we can see that's actually a user that is registered with Keystone there. And if we go back and have a look at this one, we have a heat user, but we don't have that um, domain admin user. So what we need to do, I think, is just add that and then set a password for it. So all of the users are in um, are in this file here. So what we might do is we might just use the admin password. So we'll jump over here. I hope that text is fine because I don't really want to make this bigger. So what I know we can do is we can use in um, we can use this create user function here. So this create user function, we go to create user. We've got a definition on that, so it comes from here, and this is coming from. So this comes from libcommon. So we've got a bunch of these common um, functions that are used. So this one's coming from, from libcommon in this case. So what we want to do is we want to import this port it the same way that Keystone is here. So we go up. So what they're doing is they're initializing a Keystone um, admin service client there. So we're going to need to do the same thing in Heat, and I'll just see if I've already done that. I don't think I have. Yeah, I've got Keystone v1, but all I'm using it for is to get the API endpoint. So the same way that they've done here, and this is in the uh, just the reconcile function this one's in, 
So we're going to do basically the same thing. So this is kind of where we do everything here in this reconcile normal loop. So maybe here is the right place to um, set up that user. And we want to do it before we create the heat engine. So let's do it right here. Okay, so create heat stack. Actually, before we get into this, let's do git checkout b stack main user. So we're on a nice fresh branch. So here's the engine deployment again, so we'll add it in here. And we want to create a user, so os.createUser, user. And let's see how that's implemented. So we need to pass it in a logger, a user, so we need to see how user is formatted. Let's go back here. Create user. Okay, so OpenStack user looks like this. It's like this this data structure here. So maybe we'll just copy that. Create user. So we'll pass it in exactly the same way. Okay. So create user. Passing it in a logger. So here, instance spec service user. We don't want to use that in this case. We want to use heat dot and we'll, we'll go and add a constant for this so we'll go package heat const and we'll just add it below this one so we'll call this one stack domain admin stack domain admin equals and we'll just copy it from here heat stack domain admin so that one, we'll go back to our controller. So heat so stack, there it is there. Now, password. So I think it makes sense to use just the normal admin password. So our options are, we generate a new password. We allow a user to pass in the password. We probably want to allow user to pass in the password. Let's have a look at if we already have anything for that. Password. Heat database password, admin password. Yeah. Okay, for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the admin password coming from coming from that secret, so we also need to import OpenStack here by the looks of it. Um, so add this to our imports. Um, here makes sense. Okay, oh. oh. Well done. Okay. All right, so password. We need to get a password from somewhere. Well, let's see how they're doing it over here, actually. Password. So they get data from the secret. So you get, I think that, that makes the most sense is that we just get the data from the secret as well. Okay, oh, 
secret. Get data from secret. Because we're calling the helper function there. Um, helper. Instant, instant spec secret. So yeah, we're going to get it from instant spec secret and instant spec password selector. So we do have password selector, which was here. Uh, password select doors. All right. So in our case, in our case it isn't like that. It is dot service. So we'll just get the service password. Um, and Keystone API. So have I done this before we get the Keystone API? Why? There is not equal to nil. And we want to return control result and error. Control dot result and the error. Okay, so now we've got Keystone API, uh, service project ID. So, what is service project ID in their case? So coming back from the project, yeah, I don't think, I think all we want in this case is just the service. So how did they define service project ID here? So, so they, oh yeah, they're creating it in that case. So we don't really, we don't need to create it. It's already going to exist. So let's just do, in our case, string for service. Okay. So that's going to create the user. So we need to also write out that user when we create the template. So we go down to template. I can spell. So we give it a service user. So let's add a different one here for our stack domain admin. And it's going to be stack domain admin and now password so here which can return error in this case. Okay, now here we're going to go with stack domain password. It is going to be password. Okay. Now we need to add that to our template over here. So templates, heat config, heat conf. So domain. So let's template it out anyway, like we're using the default there, but let's just make it so we can template it out. So this will be uh, stack domain admin. And this one here will be stack domain password. Make sure we did that right. So stack domain admin, yep, so this one here is wrong, it needs to have a dot in front of it. Stack domain password. What else are we templating here actually while I'm checking? Keystone URI. Okay, save that. So now we'll go down here and we'll start it running again to see if it actually runs or if I've made some typo somewhere.
Okay, so it's running. Okay, so if we go check the config map, get config map, and we'll just grab the heat. So we've got all these config maps. We'll check this one, get config map, or YAML on this one. Okay, what we want to look for is our stack domain. Okay, so we've set the stack domain user and we have set the password. Okay, now open stack user list. Did we add the user? We did add the user. Okay, get pol service equals heat. Are our pods running? They're running. Okay, so far so good. So let's try and create that heat stack now and we'll see if we still get an error. Okay, we still get an error, so let's check our pod now. Okay, so what it might be is maybe we haven't templated it. Ah, uh, it, it won't be in here. Yeah, so we haven't. So the problem is it hasn't been added to the heat engine one. We just added it to this one. It's probably a little inefficient if I have to do it this way. I might want to come up with a better solution for this. But for now, let's make the same changes here. So stack domain admin. Stack domain password. Okay, so we'll save that and we'll go and edit our heat engine controller. So we need to add the same things here. So let's just copy them. Heat engine. Paste them in there. Yeah, so it's kind of debatable whether we actually need it at all in, in this one. Maybe we're better off. getting rid of it from here and adding it only to heat engine. Right, because if we do that, uh, no, we'll leave it split, we'll open up this one, this side. So over here, let's get rid of them from this one. I don't think we need them in, in that config file as well. So we'll change all this again. So we do want this one to create the user. So we'll keep that, that happening in the, the main heat controller. But we want the config to be templated by the heat engine itself. So we don't need this to template out the, the username and password there. So yeah, we'll keep we'll keep all this so we create the user. That looks great. We need we need to get the password, so we need to set the password, we need so that's all fine. What we need though is to take this line over here. And we need to add it in. Oh, it's already here actually. I just have called it something different. So for consistency, let's make it okay a secret here as well. Then we'll go back down to this template section. Okay, so now we're templating out the um, stack domain admin and the password which we're retrieving. So now, and we've updated the template over here, but we need to change it from this one now. So we don't want this. So we'll change this back. I'm going to just use git to restore it, to be honest. Git restore um, templates, 
hate config hate.conf. So we'll restore that. So change that. Let's start this operator running again. See if we've missed anything. So this, okay, undefined secret in our case. So something was already using secret. So let's search for secret. It's fine. Secret. So this one here, we're going to do rename. Um, oh, nothing to rename, eh? Is that the only instance of it? That's the only instance of it. Save that. Make run. Okay, so we want to check the heat engine secret, not the uh, oh, config map. Big map, so this one here. I'm not sure if um, the API is going to need it. Stack domain grid. Okay, so now it's been set here. So get POL service equals heat. 31 seconds. So we'll try and create that test heat stack again. Error. Okay, still complaining. Name password stack user domain name heat stack and stack domain list. Ah, uh, so we probably need the domain as well, then I guess. So we have the domain open stack domain. We do not. Okay, so we need the domain as well. So, so what if I, instead of doing this, what if I just put it in stack user domain name equals default? Okay. Restart this again. Wait for the new pod to come up. There we go, we've got one running. We'll just give it a couple of seconds and we'll we'll try and recreate it. So note there that it's only restarting the engine pod because that's the only config that has changed. We might be a little bit early on trying this though. Type properties, identity properties, password properties, user properties, password. Have we set all the. Ah, uh, do we do all the auth token stuff? Yeah, 
Maybe we didn't do the off token stuff. Keystone. Yeah, here it all is. So usernames there, passwords there. Maybe the lowercase default is the problem. Default. And maybe we remove the quotes from these. Identity password, user password, let's... Okay, so we've got a few we've got a few more passwords missing here by the looks of that. Maybe one of those or password. So let's find all instances of password here then. So there's nothing under auth password, so trusty. Uh, so yeah, we need to add the password into this section here because we're not currently doing that. So in trusty. It is there. I mean, pretty quick to add that right now. Trusty. Heat password equals stack domain and uh, stack domain and password. Okay, that was it. So it's the trustee section. All right, that is great. So now we open stack stack list. Create complete. Beautiful network list. So we get created network. Open stack router list. We've got a router. All right, excellent. Okay, so now. That looks like all we need, so let's just make sure we get out of that. We'll do the, uh, no rice and slice change. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. God damn it, we're good. Okay. Status. Skip. Add. We need to add all these things now. Yeah, so we um, add uh, add user for stack domain admin change as the stack domain admin user and password to keystone 
while also updating the heat.conf template with the relevant data. Okay, so we'll push that and it'll complain because I don't have a branch for that. Okay, so now we've made heat work, so we'll send a pull request for that. Uh, yes, that's all I've got for, the, for this one. That was just a pretty quick and completely unplanned video to show some of the dev workflow that goes into um, working with these operators and you know how I'm, how I'm going through and troubleshooting things and figuring out what the problem is. So in the next video, I'll do one on the user experience of how to actually interact with, with heat and override config options and create heat, um, heat stacks within the Podify deployment. And then I'll make a separate video again, going over some of the more technical things from the code perspective of how we've implemented stuff. So hopefully an interesting one, a little bit different, just you know, sitting here watching me write Golang, hopefully not too boring, but let me know if you have any questions.